Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing the ATM business. So many people have been in my DMs asking me about it. Especially when I made a clubhouse profile. That was like something I talked about and it was like people were really on it. You know, they wanted to start their own ATM business or wanted to learn more about it. Because it's really interesting. If you never thought about it, you probably thought you couldn't. But you can. So I'm going to tell you how you can start your own ATM business with little capital. You don't need a whole lot of money to start this business. Um, and I'm just going to give you the ins and outs. Also, this will probably be like a series because it's certain parts once you actually get into the business that you'll need to know. So I'm going to break this up into parts. So just stay on the lookout for everything. But let's get right into it. Let's not play because time is money. You could be opening your business by the end of this week. So an ATM business, really what it is, is kind of like having a savings account and building interest monthly and being able to, you know, receive that, that uh, money monthly. So I say this to say that this is not something you might get rich off of, but you, you can make a lot of money depending upon the business. So your putting your funds in there in the um, ATM and you're getting the money off the surcharges so you're making money off of surcharges the average surcharge is three dollars so you put your you set the so that's like when you go to the ATM and then it's like well this fee char I mean this uh, terminal charge is a dollar seventy five to take funds out do you agree you say yes some places put it at three dollars some places even charge eight dollars or seven dollars or five dollars so it just depends on the location and if it's like a high traffic location and people have to have cash on hand to um, shop there it's a really good place to put your ATM most companies that you work for won't even sell you an ATM until you have a location secured so any business that you start you're going to need a LLC to or you know however you want to form your business I always recommend LLC um, you're going to need an EIN number and you're going to need a business checking account so with opening up a business account most of the time banks uh, require you to get a um, operating agreement you can look up templates online for operating agreements if you need a contact you can always DM me drop it um you know email me or whatever and I'll send you um, my contact person and they can help you so that's just number one get that out the way, get your business license and all of that, whatever your state requirements are. Y'all see me looking down, I just have my notes, I write down everything, I have a really, really bad memory. And also, I just want to make sure I'm giving y'all all the information, so y'all, you know, be in my comments like, girl, you didn't give any of the tea. Because, you know, you'll be watching somebody's video and then they're giving you, like, little bits and pieces, but they're not giving you the full tea, and you need the tea. Lemony. What's most important is the business that you place your ATM in. I've had eight ATMs and some of my ATMs didn't do well and I ended up selling them because they were just in the wrong location. Location is important. So locations that I recommend, highly recommend, would be like strip clubs, hookah lounges, um, casinos. It's really hard to find casinos because it would have to be like starting up. Most casinos already have their ATMs locked in, their contractors locked in before they even open up. But if you can find one, you can um, get them in there. Cigar lounges are a good place. People want to have cash on hand. Hair salons, barbershops, um, gas stations. These are all good places that have high traffic. Other places include venues, um, places. But see, with venues, you have to worry about is the business going to do well because they're only based off of parties and people utilizing the space to have events. So... It's not always a good thing, and I've actually had an experience where a venue didn't work out for me. Like, I'm talking about didn't work out. I'm talking about $150 maybe in the whole month. So, you don't want to do that. Unless it's a proper venue and they literally have events like back to back to back to back to back. But hookah lounges, bars, all of that. Especially bars that are like $3 bars because people want to just have cash. They don't want to just be charging their account, their um, debit card for like $6 if they only getting a couple drinks, you know. So, location. Oh, God. I'm so clumsy. <laughs> so, location is major. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is... With location comes a contract, and I'm gonna put a con I'm gonna help people write contracts in my next video. But you need a contract to have an agreement with that company of how you're going to pay them. So contracts, I'm gonna go into contracts. 
So how a contract works with an ATM business is basically you're going to um, offer this company an opportunity to have um, cash on hand. You're letting them know, like, I'm going to handle everything. If there's an issue with the machine, um, if there, if you for internet service, I will handle it all. And that's already giving them like that, you know, who I don't got to deal with it if it breaks down or whatever the case. So that's another thing. So you want to let them know. You're going to handle all of the issues with the machine. You're going to fill the machine, which they don't have to worry about using their own money. Um, you're also going to um, offer them like a small percentage from each surcharge. Um, I'm not going to lie. Most of my businesses, I offer 30 to 50 cents per surcharge. Now, if you have a business that's more so like a strip club or a casino or, you know, something that's really popping, even a convenience store that might do really, 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 really well. You can even say, like, listen, I'm going to bust you down, y'all. That term means I'm going to break you off or split with you. I'm going to split profits 50-50. And they might be like, oh, yeah, or 60-40. Like, I'll take 60, you take 40. But if that's extra income generated by something they don't have to even deal with, it's like, why not? <laughs> what are you, like, you know, it's kind of like a win-win. They don't have to deal with it. All they have to do is be there when the ATM arrives and you handle everything else. So, um, the contract is really important. You got to know how to, you also have to, this is going to be something you have to actually get up and go into. When you call on the phone, they're going to they're gonna act like they're dumb or like they're going to be like, an ATM, no, I'm cool, like that type of thing. When you walk in there with your contracts ready and you say, listen, I see you don't have an ATM in this company. What's up? I know you need an ATM in here. And I found that when I was calling places, they were like, kind of like, eh. But when I walked in the places, everybody was like, oh, yeah, let me, you know, I'm on board. So, I definitely like, recommend walking in and having your contracts ready. Um, most places would be like, well, can we schedule a time to sit down and talk or whatever? Because the owners be like moving around and they don't want to just be right on the spot. Like, oh, I'm about to sign this. They want to talk to you, ask you questions, what type of machines. Um, I also recommend having a picture of your machine and like the benefits of the machine with the um, like the if it's a new model, letting them know everything about the machine because that's really important. They don't want a machine that they're going to get in there and it's just going to be breaking down every two minutes. And every time people come in, they're saying like, you know, error or whatever the case, out of service because you know you hate that. You see an ATM sign on the building and then you go in and you like, damn, out of service. So. That's that. So location contract. So now um I want to go into the expenses. So an ATM can cost anywhere from sixteen hundred. Well, I'm gonna say thirteen hundred, but really the thirteen hundred you don't want to deal with that. But I'm gonna say thirteen hundred to three thousand dollars, right? Um, these are for new machines. So, I mean, they can really range a little bit higher than that, but it's really no need because you can get brand new machines for that, you know, in that ballpark. So, six, um, $1,300 to $3,000. Now, this is going from old to new machines. So, the older the machine, the more problems you may have. The newer the machine, the less problems you want to have. So, that's just that on that. You might get a really good old machine and, you know, it's no problems, but... The newer machines, I just think they run really smooth. So I'd rather just, you know, pay my little money in, in advance and have good quality stuff. So, um, yeah. So you're looking at, so we're just going to ballpark at like 22, we'll say 2200 for a good machine, right? Um, you want to put enough in the machine to cover the, the amount of traffic that they have in. So, for example... Some places get about, like the average is about 12 people using the machine, um, using the ATM a day. If they have good foot traffic, the average is 12 people a day. Most people take out $60, um, 40 to $60. So we'll just say, we'll just say uh, $50. So 12 people, $50, that's $600 a day that you, your machine might do. In a week, that could be $3,000. Now, if you're close to that machine and, or you have somebody in the area that can go there and switch the money out, often then you can just have enough for a couple of days you know and you just keep going there refilling the machine refilling the machine but if you want the money to just you know add up and you don't have to keep you know going there maybe once a week you can go i would say to have at least three thousand dollars in the machine 
You can have 2,000 to start. I don't think that that's a bad idea because it depends on the place. You might not have that 12 people coming in every single day. But what happens is that money that you're putting in the machine, it just recycles. So it's not like, oh, I'm putting 3,000 in, dang, I'll put another 3,000 in next week. No, that 3,000 that you put in the first day is going to be the same money that you're putting in 30 days later. So you're just recycling your money. So no matter how many times you, you um, go to the machine, it's the same $3,000 or the same $2,000 or the same $1,000. So you're not losing any money there besides the initial amount that you're putting in. But you're basically recycling that money to make you money. That's why I say it's like having a savings account with the interest that you're accruing monthly. Um, so yeah. So if you put in $3,000 and you go there weekly, um, every time that the money is taken out, the bank renews it into your account. So within 24 hours, you'll have, they take out $60, within 24 hours, you'll have that $60 back. That's another reason why you want to have your bank business account separate. Because you don't want to, you know, differentiate the money that's supposed to go back to your ATM and then you end up spending it or whatever the case. Um, so yeah. So those are basically the only two real expenses besides the money that you'll need to form your LLC to get your EIN number and to basically get a business um, operating agreement um, mixed up, um, set up for you. And then also going into the bank and opening an account. Most places, uh, they require $100 to be put into that account um, when you open a business account. You got to have at least $100 put into that account. So that'll be, so I'm going to say until... I would say to have about $5,000. Now, I want to talk to you about another way of getting the funds for an ATM because I um, I just recently learned about this. Me, personally, I've been using my own money for all of my ATMs. I wasn't aware of, when I jumped into it, I kind of just jumped into it. I'm one of those people, I don't like to sit on ideas. So if I feel as though I can make some money off of something and it's a good idea and it's unique and it's something that I could just build my own lane and, you know, I jump into it that's just me but you can look into money management companies I'm not gonna talk too much about it on this episode but you know moving forward I'll get more in depth with it but you what you want to do is there's companies that will allow you to manage that money and you're just putting that money into the ATM and boom like that so you can look at some money management accounts I mean companies that you can you know build with but for me I use my own money it was just something I wanted to do and also it's kind of like keeping you from spending unnecessary money because you're putting it in the ATM you know that money has to go back into the ATM boom the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the different the different um, types of ATMs that you want to look into so there's two different types that I really highly recommend and I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons of those machines or whatever. There's two different models. So um, one model is the highest song and um, the highest song basically is made outside of the U.S. and um, you can get those used for a really good number like around $1,700 and they're usually like really nicely made. Um, they have like the all the bells and whistles like you know they look good and everything like that and um they're a popular brand because they're not expensive. Um, you can get it quickly, but it's coming out from outside of the U.S. So the Gen Mega, on the other hand, and I believe it's the Gen Mega 2200 that I actually use for all of my companies. Um, I get the brand new ones in Agoho about $2,300, but they're br I get brand new. They're made in the U.S. So when I say made in the U.S., the biggest thing about that is if you have to have parts made and Things like that. If something breaks down, then you know that it's guaranteed that you can get it quicker and get it in the U.S. If it's outside of the U.S., it kind of gets real tricky with the parts and stuff like that. So I just don't recommend higher sum over Gen Mega. But I think if you're trying to save a couple dollars, then go higher sum. Because there's also companies that you can get the, the machines through that will cover certain um, parts to get the parts. But you'll still have to pay for like getting them fixed. So that's one thing. Um, we talked about location. We also kind of tapped into how to get customers. I told you, you know, you want to walk in and get it done like that. You don't want to be calling, 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 calling. So, of course, people want to talk about profits. Now, this goes back to when I was talking about locations. Depending on your location, you can make a lot of money. We were talking about the average is 12 people per day, right? So, 12 people per day, they're taking out a um, Take it out from your ATM and you have it at $3, right? 
So say you have it at the average, which is three dollars. That's thirty-six dollars a day. In thirty days, that would be a thousand dollars and a thousand eighty dollars. So boom, you could have an ATM making a thousand eighty dollars. If you spent about three thousand on your ATM, it's gonna take you three months to get that money back. Boom, now you're making straight profit every month, extra thousand dollars. That's rent or a mortgage. You know what I mean? And um, say for instance, you got a real machine that's doing numbers you might get 30 people a day right and at the three dollars that's 90 people that's 90 dollars a day now you're making 2700 a month so an extra 2700 a month can be really helpful for a lot of people um and then you know it just goes up from there if you if you have it in like a strip club you might be charging eight dollars eight dollars eight dollars times 12 people 96 dollars times 30 days $2,880. So, extra income. This is passive income for the most part. You can always hire somebody to go to the ATM for you and fill it. One thing I do want to talk about um, is basically um, when to go to fill your ATM. So, if you're at like a bar or you're at like um, a strip club, places like that, you don't want to fill the ATM when the people are there. So, you want to make sure you schedule that in the daytime when there's nothing going on because, you know, it can be dangerous. You want it, especially if you're a woman. I always go and do it myself, but I also, you know, I make sure I'm protecting. Yeah, you just want to make sure you're going to fill your ATMs at a good time. You, like I said, you can hire somebody to do that for you so you don't have to worry about it. But yeah in my next episode i'm gonna talk about a little bit more in depth this is just like the beginner you know touch on everything that you need to start if you have any other questions oh you know i'm gonna give you a gem so the last thing i'm gonna talk about is where to get your atm the first place that i'm going to recommend is and i'm not getting paid by anybody to do this please believe me <laughs> cartronics um Car Chinese is a really, really good company to work with. Um, it's actually a guy over there that I recommend named Matt if you do tap into Car Chinese. Um, they handle basically everything. So with the ATM, you need internet service. So they handle the internet service. I think it's about $18 a month, but it's coming out of everything else that you have going on. It kind of won't matter. Um, they'll handle the ATM service, I mean the um, internet service, they'll have the technician come out, drill it into the ground for you, set it up, walk you through the steps. If you're a beginner, it's the perfect opportunity because you don't have to worry about, oh, how do I figure out this? You know, you're going to need like codes and things to get into the machine, which I'll talk about later um, in the next, in my next episode of it. But they walk you through every single thing. They'll walk you through how to fill the machine, you know, how to... Um, release the machine like they'll talk about how the bills can get jammed up and if the bills get jammed up it'll cause a problem you gotta have like new bills they'll go through every single thing but definitely 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 if you're just starting out I would recommend going through cartronics to get your machines they also have like a referral plan like if you have friends that might want to get an atm if you refer them you can get a hundred dollars and stuff like that but other than that I thank y'all for watching. I hope I was really helpful. If you got some gems, just drop a diamond in the comments and make sure y'all like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. You know, if y'all are just looking to make some extra. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. I want to cause you to like have to become a full time strong entrepreneur. If you have your own job and stuff like this. That is the perfect business to start. Like, it's not like a vending machine. You got to come, put the snacks in there, and, you know, figure out what snacks people like and all of that stuff. You're just dropping the money in and carrying on about your day. You know what I mean? So, I just think it's a good idea. I, I'm doing it. Um, yeah. So, thank you so much for watching. Tap in. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing, like, you know, part two. And if it has to be a part three, then I'm going to get into a part three. And that's just that. But this is the squad that never settles. You want to keep on grinding, keep on working and do everything. Nobody resign. What a money resign. What a money resign.